Hey guys, so I've seen a lot of content about how to set your project up for VR, but I've never seen a comprehensive guide on the actual project settings you need, the ones to pass Oculus as guidelines. So let's take a look. So personally, I would recommend the Universal Render Pipeline. It has a lot of optimizations that will make it easier to pass Oculus's 72 frames per second, 90 frames per second guidelines. The only reason you wouldn't use this is if you were trying to use their avatar system, uh, which still does not support URP. However, it probably will support URP in the next few months or so when they get their new avatar system out. So it's not too much of a worry. From there, you'll wanna to switch to whatever platform it is that you're using. This is fairly obvious, but still important. Let's say that we're switching to Android. If you are using Android, you'll wanna switch this to ASTC. It is the Oculus recommended compression. Then you're gonna to wanna to open up your project settings because a lot of it is gonna be in here. So you're gonna to wanna to click on the audio tab and in there you're gonna to wanna to set a spatializer plugin. This is recommended by Oculus and pretty much everybody else who makes VR stuff and essentially makes your audio more 3D. So if you download the Oculus utilities package from the asset store, you'll be able to set it to Oculus spatializer, which is as good as any. You'll wanna go into quality and you'll basically wanna delete high and low. And then you're going to wanna to turn VSync count to don't sync. The reason for this is if you're targeting Rift or Vive or something like that and you have VSync on, it will actually sync to whatever the refresh rate of their monitor is. So if they have a 60 hertz refresh rate monitor, it will sync it to 60 hertz when you want a VR headset to be hitting 72, 90 frames per second, something like that. So they'll reject you for this. And if you are using URP and you deleted the other graphic settings, make sure to go into graphics and set this to the medium quality or low quality or whichever one you didn't delete. Same thing in quality. It should be noted that if you haven't started using it, you will want to use Text Mesh Pro. You can get that from the package manager in window package manager. Essentially, it's a font system or a text system that makes it so if you get really close to the text, it still looks sharp and clean. Because in VR, that's a big problem. They can get close to text, they can get far away from it. Uh, it's pretty bad if you use the normal text. And then you're gonna wanna open up the player settings. And in here, you can just put in your company name. Let's say Sol5, product name, project settings guide, sounds good. We can set the version to one. If you're using Android, you're gonna wanna set this use 32-bit display buffer to true if it's not already set. And that's gonna reduce banding, and basically when colors look like they're stuck in a band even though it's supposed to be the same color. And you'll notice that on the headset even with this, but it'll make it better. Then you'll want to go into other settings and you'll want to make sure that this is set to linear, not gamma. If you're targeting Android, you'll want to make sure that the minimum API level is 23, that is the new lowest. Target will just be highest. You'll want to switch scripting backend to IL to CPP or intermediate language to C++. You'll want to make sure incremental garbage collection is on. And you'll want to change this to ARM64. They're now only accepting 64-bit binaries for the game. So make sure that that's selected. Make sure you get rid of that one. If you're targeting the Oculus Quest, which runs Android, you're going to need to have it signed. So you'll need to go into Publishing Settings and create a key store. So you can do Key Store Manager, Create New, in Dedicated Location. I just put it in a Builds folder. User Key Store sounds good. Save it. Give it a password alias we'll just call it release password give that one as well and you'll get rejected if you do not create a key store first and last name dom schmitty organizational unit i don't know what that means but you don't need it organization sol five and then just put in whatever you have here city let's say atlanta add the key release create created and now it's set. And it should be noted that each time you open up Unity, or at least when you're trying to create a build that you're gonna to submit to the Oculus Store, you will need to put that password back in. If you're not using the Universal Render Pipeline, which I do not recommend, you should find an MSAA uh, option in here. You'll wanna set that to times four. If you are using the Universal Render Pipeline, you want to click on the whatever quality asset you have, go to the inspector and change anti-aliasing to four times. This is recommended as well, and they may reject you for it. Basically, it takes a little bit of performance, but it's gonna make your game look way, way better, so you want it anyway. You'll want to have SRP Batcher on, that's just for performance, and I believe dynamic batching can be off, because this will replace it. It's basically a better version of dynamic batching. 
If that all seems annoying to set every time, I do have a script that will validate the project settings for you. And every time you create a project, you can basically just click up here. It'll be validation, validate project settings, and it will set all of that for you. And you can get that from me in the Discord linked below. And there you have it. Those are the project settings you'll want to create a great VR game and to pass the Oculus guidelines when submitting to either App Lab or the Oculus Store in general. I hope this was helpful and have a good day.